Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks, written by Al Lewis. Well, with spring upon us, bigger and better playgrounds for children are the order of the day. Madison High School, where Our Miss Brooks teaches English, promptly volunteered to help its local chamber of commerce collect funds for this worthy cause. That's why our beloved principal, Osgood Conklin, called us into his office early Friday morning. Us consisted of Mr. Boynton and myself as faculty advisors, Walter Denton, the student who runs the school paper, and Harriet Conklin, the student who runs Walter Denton. <laughs> as soon as we were all seated, Mr. Conklin addressed us. We are here to discuss a project which is near and dear to my heart, children's playgrounds in this community. I'm sure I cannot overemphasize the importance of the little ones in our present-day civilization. We got enough little ones. What the Chamber of Commerce wants is some big playgrounds. <laughs> If that was intended as a witticism, Denton, it missed the mark. I don't know. I thought it had a certain... Quiet, of... Miss Brooks. <laughs> to help raise money for this worthy project, we are holding a charity auction in our gym at 4 o'clock this afternoon. However, due to a very poor publicity campaign handled by Denton, not very many people know about it. But, Daddy, the poor publicity wasn't all Walter's fault. No, it wasn't, Mr. Conklin. He had lots of other duties. Oh, yes, sir. He's been managing the basketball team, for one thing. Just a minute. It's very nice of you all to defend me, but I'd rather have this out with Mr. Conklin myself. Now, about that publicity campaign, Mr. Conklin. What about the campaign? <laughs> Pretty poor. <laughs> What I want from you all now are suggestions to stimulate public interest in our auction and bring out a big crowd of bidders. Well, perhaps we could take some spot announcements on the radio. Yes, that would reach a lot of people. Miss Brooks, have you any idea what a 30-second spot announcement costs? Well, we don't have to buy 30 seconds. We could take about five and say something quick, like, Today auction Madison High School. But, Miss Brooks, that sounds as if we're auctioning off the school. Is that bad? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if the object is just to lure people over... To Any see... feasible suggestions? I have an idea, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> Undoubtedly. <laughs> How about you, Harriet? Can you think of anything? I think we should mimeograph some handbills and pass them out door to door during lunch periods. A lot of us kids could take different neighborhoods and really plaster the town. Excellent, Harriet. Yes, indeed. This town hasn't been plastered in years. <laughs> Your idea, Walter. Well, I was thinking, maybe we could paint a big banner and let it fly over the business district all day. Fly over? You mean trailing from the flagpole on some big building? No, trailing from a zeppelin. A zeppelin? Oh, I don't mean the big type zeppelin. He means the small, compact zeppelin suitable for home or office. <laughs> Mr. Boynton, do you suppose you could inject a note of sanity into this discussion? Well, I, I have thought of a rather fascinating scheme, sir. <laughs> it's quite humorous, too. Oh, let's have it. <laughs> well, I've got about a, a dozen frogs in the laboratory now. I keep them there for the purpose of... Uh, we know what they're there for, Mr. Boynton, and I just had breakfast. <laughs> Sorry. Well, my idea is to take them all into the heart of the town. I'd have them on, on little leashes, of course, and <laughs> get this, Mr. Conklin. They'd be dragging a sign behind them. The frogs would be. <laughs> Go on, boy. Well, the sign the frogs would be dragging would say. <laughs> It'd say. Come to the Madison gym today. Things will sure be hopping. <laughs> Mr. Boynton, you have my permission to take your idea and hop out of this room. I really think the handbills will do the trick, Daddy. So do I, Harriet. Miss Brooks, do you concur? Frequently. Oh, <laughs> I'd like to discuss something now that we all seem to have overlooked. 
Namely, if our auction is to be a success, we lack one fairly important item. Uh, what's that? Something to auction off. <laughs> a very cogent observation. However, the members of the student body were asked to bring their parents' donations to school this morning and leave them just outside the classroom. You, Miss Brooks, will be in charge of augmenting these donations. Me? Oh, but Mr. Conklin, I've got other things to now do which are going to take truth, up... Now tell the truth, Miss Brooks. Is there anything as important as raising money for children's playgrounds? Yes, sir. Raising children for the playground. <laughs> hey, you hear that, Mr. Boynton? When are you going to ask Quiet, Mr. Walter. <laughs> Conklin, I want to help in this campaign, and but I really don't... And you're going to. I know where we might be able to get some more merchandise for the auction. For Mr. Jessup. He's a pretty good friend of my dad's. Oh, you mean J.D. Jessup, the big real estate man? Yes, sir. He's the biggest philanthropist in this part of the country. Contributes to everything and anything. Huh? He's a natural-born sucker for a worthwhile cause. <laughs> Charmingly put, Walter. And do get in touch with Mr. Sucker. Uh, Jessup. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Mr. Boynton, you will see to it that the auction tables are set up in the gym. Oh, yes, sir. You, Miss Brooks, with the assistance of my daughter, will inspect the merchandise outside the classrooms and jot down the approximate value of each object prior to the auction. But, Mr. Conklin, why do I have to go through all that? Because in addition to obtaining more material for this affair, I have also decided to put you in charge of auctioning it off. Meetings adjourned. Oh, but, sir, I just... I said meetings adjourned. Good day, all. Good day. Bye, Daddy. Golly, that's quite an honor Daddy conferred on you, Miss Brooks. Just think, you're head auctioneer. Yes, and we both know whose head I'd like to auction off first. <laughs> Let's see what's in this pile over here, Miss Brooks. Hmm, one broken lamp, one pretty beat-up coffee pot. And look at this, an old mix master. It looks as if somebody dropped it in the new Mixmaster. Not much of a haul so far. But I'd better jot it all down anyway. Now, what's this? A box of Christmas tree ornaments. That's timely. <laughs> uh, one woolen sock, a busted harmonica, and here's one ice skate. One ice skate? That'll be for the fellow who gets the one sock. <laughs> Oh, here's an item that should bring in plenty. A rusty doorknob. <laughs> here's a pair of torn woolen gloves. And look at this, Harriet. One blue jay corn plaster. <laughs> That's for the fellow with the one sock and the ice skate. <laughs> oh, we've got to do better than this. Daddy would have donated some things himself, Miss Brooks, but we traded in all our old furniture for the stuff that's going into our new house. Oh, that's right. You're moving soon, aren't you? Uh-huh. Late this afternoon. I'm sure Daddy will invite you over as soon as we're settled. Your mother might, but not your Daddy. He's been angry with me all week, Harriet. That's why he's piling all this extra work on me to get even. Get even for what? A slight accident that occurred in his office on Monday. He asked me to cut the price tag off a new umbrella he'd bought. And? I took a scissors and went after it. Unfortunately, my hand slipped and I cut a nick in the material of the umbrella. How big a nick? Two yards. <laughs> Ever since then, he's been looking daggers at me, or at least sharp umbrellas. <laughs> well, I've got to get into my next class, Harriet. We'll have to continue this checkup during study period. All right, Miss Brooks. And please, don't take Daddy's tantrums too seriously. Just remember, his bark is much worse than his bite. An even more appropriate slogan would be, Let sleeping dogs lie. <laughs> what? Oh, I'm sorry, Harriet. I didn't mean that the way it sounds. I wouldn't for a minute want you to think that I considered your father asleep. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. No other dentifrice offers proof of such results. Proof that Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Two years' research at leading universities using Colgate Dental Cream, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice history on tooth decay. Conclusive proof that when teeth are brushed with Colgate's right after eating, Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Yes, the toothpaste you use to clean your breath while you clean your teeth 
now offers a safe, proved way to reduce tooth decay. Modern science shows decay is caused by mouth acids, which are at their worst right after eating. Brushing teeth with Colgate's is directed, helps remove acids before they harm enamel. Colgate Dental Cream has been proved to contain all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. Get Colgate Dental Cream today. Big economy size, only 59 cents. Always use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay before it starts. Remember, no other dentifrice offers proof of such results. What with rounding up additional donations for the charity bazaar and doing a little teaching on the side, I had quite a busy morning. When lunch period rolled around, I was still in a collecting mood, so I decided to have lunch with Mr. Boynton, a collector's item if I ever saw one. <laughs> well, here's a nice table by the window, Miss Brooks. Oh, good. Now we can throw the food away without any trouble. Oh, it, it isn't as bad as it was. I think the food's picked up. I know. They don't want you to step in it. <laughs> well... The gym's all set for the auction this afternoon. I'm glad you reminded me, Mr. Boynton. You know, some of the donations are in pretty good shape. And there may be some real bargains on the block this afternoon. Do you think so? Absolutely. If somebody wanted to furnish a little love nest, for instance, he could probably do it for next to nothing. I'll bet he could at that. Yes, sir. Anybody with marriage on his mind could save a pretty penny today. Get a real cozy apartment started. If I run into anybody contemplating such a step, I'll certainly tell him about it. <laughs> well, I tried. <laughs> no, I could use a couple of things for my apartment at that. When you inspected the stuff this morning, you didn't run across a pair of andirons, did you? As a matter of fact, I did. I don't know who donated them, but they look almost brand new. Well, gee, maybe I can pick them up reasonably at the auction. Well, why wait? We can go look at them right after lunch. And if you like them, we'll have a one-man auction, and I'll see that you get them for a fair price. Oh, but Miss Brooks, would that be fair to the general public? Oh, haven't you heard? They've got andirons. <laughs> Have you seen stretched snodgrass anywhere, Harriet? No, Daddy, I haven't. I told that dummy to bring lunch to my office 20 minutes ago. Please, Daddy. That's no way to talk about Madison's star athlete. He may be a star athlete, but it's his brains that need the exercise. <laughs> Calm down, Daddy. I'm going into the cafeteria now, and I'll see what's keeping him. Oh, before I go, Daddy, I just spoke to Mother on the phone, and she told me all the living room furniture has been delivered to the new house. She says she just knows you're going to love it. Mother has such wonderful taste, don't you think? Obviously, she married me. <laughs> oh, one more thing, Daddy. The store made a mistake and delivered our andirons to the school here instead of the new house. They're right outside your office now. Well, what am I supposed to do with them? Bring them home with you after school. They're awfully pretty, Daddy. Come on, take a look at them. Well, there's nothing better to do while I'm waiting for that dunderhead. Here they are. Aren't they pretty? Oh, they're all right, I guess. Mother paid $12 for them. Say, they're pretty. <laughs> well, I'd better get into the cafeteria. I'll send Stretch in with your lunch as soon as I find him. See you later, Daddy. Very well, Harriet. I'll be in my office. Why everything has to happen all at once, I'll never know. All days... Let's see now. Where are those andirons I saw this morning? Are these them? Yes, those are them. <laughs> these are those. <laughs> yep, them's the andirons all. <laughs> How do you like them? Well, they're perfect. Just what I had in mind. Good. Tell you what I'm gonna do. Step in a little closer, bud. What am I offered for these lovely andirons? Uh, how about 50 cents? <laughs> This boy is closer than I thought. <laughs> I've got 50. Do I hear more? Not from me. Why, I'd give 75 cents for these myself. Well, I I'll make it 80. Now you're talking. I got 80 cents. 80 I've got. Going once for 80. Going twice for 80. I'll bid 85 cents. <laughs> That's the spirit. I've got 85. 
<laughs> oh, you're not in this, Mr. Conklin. I'm not? No, sir. Mr. Boynton needs these andirons, and, well, I think 80 cents is a fair price. Oh, so do I, Miss Brooks, considering that I just paid $12 for them. $12? I, I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Conklin. We didn't know they were yours. Well, that's quite all right, Boynton, but just to be on the safe side, I'll take them with me. I'd better get back into my office before Miss Brooks sells my socks. <laughs> we just need one. <laughs> Hello, oh, Mr. Conklin. I got your lunch. Well, it's about time, Snodgrass. Come with me. I'm terribly sorry about the andirons, Mr. Conklin. There was so much stuff in the hall that there was no way for me... I know, I know, I know. Put everything on my desk, Snodgrass. Yes, sir. Here's your coffee. I just put sugar and cream in it, and I'm sure it's just the way you like it. I'm sure it is. Except that I ordered tea with lemon. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Conklin. I'll change it. Never mind. Where's my sandwich? Here it is. Bacon and tomato on whole wheat, wasn't it? Yes, it was, Stretch. And I suppose that's why you've brought me peanut butter on gluten bread. <laughs> Gosh, Mr. Conklin, I must have got confused. I want me to take it back? No, it's too late now. I'll eat it. But before you leave, I have another errand for you. You could save me a lot of trouble if you would take these andirons over to my new house. The address is 616 Anderson Avenue. Is that clear, Stretch? Yes, sir. You want me to take these, uh, uh, what are they again? Andirons. Oh, yeah. Uh, you want me to take these andirons over to your new house at, uh, uh, what was that address again? <laughs> 616 Anderson Avenue. It's very simple if you associate andirons with Anderson Avenue, you see? Oh, sure. You want me to take these Andersons over uh, and... uh, 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 <laughs> I'll write out the address for you. There you are now. Put it in your pocket and don't lose it. Okay, Mr. Conklin. Oh, uh, by the way, Snodgrass, Mrs. Conklin may be out shopping, so just leave the andirons on the front porch. Yes, sir. Hiya, Stretch. Boy, what a deal I just made with Mr. Jessup. Who's he, Waller? He's the big philanthropist. He is? He owns real estate all over this town. And he just told me that one of his houses is being torn down in a few days to make room for the new freeway. Boy, that's too bad. No, it isn't. Instead of selling the furniture in it to a second-hand store, Mr. Jessup is donating it to our charity bazaar. He said we could help ourselves to anything we want. Boy, that's good. Now, you got to do me a favor, Stretch. I have to get some lunch now, and I want you to find Miss Brooks and ask her to make arrangements to have that furniture picked up. The address is 211 Ironside Avenue. <laughs> 211 Ironside Avenue. Yeah, I wrote it on this slip of paper. Here, I'll put it in your pocket so you don't lose it. But, Walter... I, I sure pre appreciate you're doing this for me, Stretch. I'll see you later. Wait a minute. Gosh, now he's got everything mixed up. Let's see. Mr. Conklin's new address is on this slip of paper. Where is it? What was it Mr. Conklin said again? Associate and irons? Ironside. That's it. Sure. The Andirons go to 211 Ironside Avenue, and we pick up the furniture at 616 Anderson Avenue. It was certainly generous of Mr. Jessup to donate a house full of furniture. It sure was, even if he is a big philant... philant... Steady, boy. <laughs> I hope we're near the place. It's 315, and the auction's supposed to start at 4. Besides, I've ordered the moving van for 3.30. Oh, it's only another couple of blocks. Well, I'm sorry I was late picking you up, Miss Brooks, but I had to drop some andirons off at Mr. Conklin's new house. I know them well. I almost sold them to Mr. Boynton. Well, this is the place. 616 Anderson Avenue. Say, that's a rather pretty house. It's a shame they have to tear it down and make room for the freeway. Come on, Miss Brooks. Let's go and pick out the furniture we want for the auction. All right, Stretch. Have you got a key to the place? Well, Walter didn't say nothing about no key, but I'll get us in all right. I'll just kick in a window. But, Stretch, you can't do that. Why not? The place is being torn down anyway. Oh, I know, but that's... A... What'd you say, Miss Brooks? I was just making conversation. <laughs> well, this window's too small. I can't reach the doorknob. Oh, wait, there's a French window over here. This one's on me. I've got French heels on. Well, let me help you. <laughs> You know something, Stretch? One more kick and the freeway can go through here without moving the house. <laughs> going once, going twice. Sold to the gentleman in the derby for $1.75. 
And now, folks, we'll have a brief intermission. Oh. Why are you doing that, Miss Brooks? We still got a whole bunch of furniture to auction off. I'm just stalling, Walter. I'm hoping some bigger spenders will drop in. I think it's a shame to let a beautiful rug like that last one go for $1.75. Me too, Mrs. Davis. And I hated to sell that lovely piano for nineteen fifty. dollars <laughs> I'll just have to get higher bids on the remaining items. Oh, oh Miss Brooks. Yes, Mr. Boynton? Uh, what would I have to offer you on that red plush love seat? Just a little encouragement. <laughs> <laughs> you mean money. Well, it, it's hard to tell, Mr. Boynton. I have an idea how we can get higher prices. Connie, why don't I act as sort of a shill? A shill? Yes, I learned that word from my brother, Victor. When I was a little girl, he was in the theatrical business, you know. Yes, I know, Mrs. Davis. During intermission, he always used to sell me the first box of Cracker Jack with a wristwatch in it. What I'll do is just stimulate the bidding a little. Well, it is for a good cause. Hello, Miss Brooks, everybody. I trust the money is pouring into the till. Frankly, Mr. Conklin, it's just drizzling in. <laughs> I'm waiting for Harriet's handbills to show a little better result. Have a seat and make yourself at home, won't you? Oh, that should be easy, Miss Brooks. As I look at this furniture about me, I feel as if I am at home. <laughs> Take that lamp, for example. It's almost an exact duplicate of one my wife bought last week. Cost over $40. Uh, what did that one go for, may I ask? Seven and a half. Seven and a half. <laughs> that is a bargain, isn't it? <laughs> now then, inasmuch as this project is so close to my heart, I think I should participate. Now take that red plush love seat, for example. It would be a perfect match for one I have at home. Paid $150 for it. Uh, put it up for auction right now, Miss Brooks. But, Mr. Conklin, this is intermission. Well, uh, just for our little group. Those others seem quite lethargic anyway. But it's supposed to be a public auction, Mr. Conklin. Well, we're the public, aren't we? Mrs. Davis, Denton, Mr. Boynton, and that'll be plenty. Um, how much money do you have, Denton? Two dollars. Oh, fine, fine. <laughs> how much have you got, Mr. Boynton? Uh, about $45. Somebody died? <laughs> well, let's begin, Miss Brooks Put up the love seat now I'll start the bidding I bid three dollars Already I'm shut out of the bidding <laughs> I kind of had my eye on that, too I'll offer uh, five dollars uh, Going, going, Ten dollars go uh, Fifteen Going, Twenty-five Thirty-five Forty Forty-five Forty-six I bid forty-seven dollars Wait a minute how can you bid $47? I'm loaning my two bucks to Mr. Boynton. They're not doing me any good. <laughs> I'll put an end to this bidding right now. I bid $50. Yes, sir. I bid $50 for this lovely red plush love seat. Going once, going twice. 55. Yeah. Where did that come from? Where did... Oh, oh, it's you, Mrs. Davis. Well, if you bid 55, I guess I'll have to bid... 65. Uh, uh, 75. 80. 85. I've got 85. Going once, going twice. Last chance. Let's have another bid or this gentleman gets it for 85. Going, going. Remember, folks, in addition to this beautiful love seat, I'm throwing in absolutely free a box of Cracker Jack. 86. I bid $100. And that's my final offer. 110. I bid $110. Going, going. Oh, come, come. I'll have to sell it to Mrs. Davis unless I get a higher bid. Going, going. 115. <laughs> you can't do that, Mrs. Davis. You're bidding against yourself. Oh, what's the difference? I'm just a shill. <laughs> What? I demand that we revert back to my last bid of $100. Sold to Mr. Conklin. Fine. Now, let's see. What else have we here? Oh, there's quite a bit of stuff, thanks to Mr. Jessup's generosity. Why, we practically cleaned out that house of his at 616 Anderson Avenue. Well, Jessup has the true American spirit, the spirit of benevolence and charity, so prevalent and throughout this glorious nation. From the rock-bound coast of Maine, to the sunny shores of 616 and... Anna! Please, Mr. Conklin. I know 
you're patriotic, but I've never seen your face turn red, white, and blue before. <laughs> Miss Brooks, how did you get into that house? Oh, it was easy. Stretch Snodgrass and I just kicked in a few windows. <laughs> did you now? <laughs> Well, I would like Pardon to... Pardon me, Mr. Conklin. I've got to talk to you right away, Miss Brooks. Oh, couldn't it wait, Stretch? I'm rather busy at the moment. But I just saw Harriet Conklin, and I found out we made a little mistake. That wasn't Mr. Jessup's house we took the furniture out of. It wasn't? Then whose house was it? Shall we dance? <laughs> Mr. Conklin, it was your house. Well, there's only one way to settle this. Gather round, folks. Gather round. What am I bid for me and Stretch Snodgrass? <laughs> Eve Arden as our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight... Yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a Luster Cream shampoo. Luster Cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Dumas' magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Better than a soap, better than a liquid, Luster Cream is a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft. Manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight, yes, tonight, try Luster Cream shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful Luster Cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. As Mr. Conklin slowly turned a deeper shade of purple, there was another flurry of activity in our corner of the gym. 180. 185. 190. 195. Miss Brooks, what's going on? Step aside, Harriet. I'm taking your father's blood pressure. <laughs> Next week, tune into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, directed by Al Lewis, with the music of Wilbur Hatch under the direction of Maurice Carlton. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, and Leonard Smith. For a beauty bath that brings you glamour from head to toe, get bath size plum olive soap. Yes, ladies, for a velvet smooth beauty lather that caresses your skin, leaves your whole body glowing with the warm blush of fragrant loveliness, enjoy a beauty bath with bath size palm olive. It's perfect for your tub or shower. Just the gentlest massage over your body creates a glorious lather that leaves your skin Delightful. Yes, for the most luxurious bath you've ever had. Get big bath sized palm olive soap. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.